And the day we sweated out on the streets of a runaway American dream. And now we ride through mansions of glory and suicide machines. Marcus Conti reporting on this Sunday. Sunday it used to be a long history in America of talking about politics, big picture politics, especially on TV, uh, on a Sunday. It was a big deal, right? I remember I used to watch... Uh, when, when there was some, a little bit of uh, integrity left in the media, is to watch um, Meet the Press, right? That's before uh, Sleepy Chuck Todd, you know, Sleepy Eye Chuck Todd, the guy uh, it, who does it now, it used to be Tim Russard. Remember the name Tim Russard? Right? Tim Russard, interesting story, actually. Tim Russard took a heart attack uh, leading up to the 2008 um, election against Hillary Clinton, the Democratic primary against Hillary Clinton, and then Barack Obama. And it is interesting. There is a co- correlation between the fact that Tim Russell took a massive heart attack while he was at the office as he was down talking, as he was down playing Hillary Clinton on television. <laughs> now, I don't know. I always speculated that Tim Russell, the NBC uh, Meet the Press guy, was a, was a, was a hit, was a... a um, was a Hillary Clinton hit. Now it's not, you know, now, now, now we know, now that it's all out in the open, you know, the, the uh, body bag, uh, it's not that unrealistic. So, so uh, a while ago I made a prediction, Marcus Conti made a prediction, who would be the next president of the United States? Now we already have a fine example. Donald Trump is the president of the United States right now, and he is running for re-election. However, he's being challenged, right, because in a, in a free and fair society, the people are supposed to choose the president. Uh, you know, it's it's either one or the other. You have to stand with one or the other. So Trump will be standing on the stage debating somebody from the other, the other side, which is the Democrats, right? Because I know it's simple, right? But who I had said long ago that the 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 candidate, the the president would be one of two people, and I say you know that. Um, I'm pretty much, I'm pretty much spot on in that prediction. So let's look at some of the, some of what is transpiring lately. So, so Joe Biden is again the gaff king. Uh, he's he's living with his shoe in his mouth, his foot in his mouth firmly, total 100% proving himself to be a 100% shit sandwich. No chance really of of winning. So, so 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 far. Uh, Biden has uh, that one debate, right? That first debate killed him, right? They got, they cr- he got crushed. And there's no other visual of him in front of the American people, really, because he can't draw a crowd. He does a, you know, a rally and, you know, 100 people show up and then they do a photo op and they, 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 they fuck it up. It's, uh, uh, they're, they're doing it at a, at a nursing home. You see all these old people falling asleep, right? The guy's a fucking loser. <laughs> so... So he did a, um, a talk on CNN, and Chris Cuomo, uh, Mario Cuomo's son and uh, Andrew Cuomo of New York's brother, tore him a new ass, right? They, he ripped them up, right? And, and uh, to the extent that they even said that his handlers, Joe Biden's handlers, had to come into the interview and save him and rescue him. So uh, we'll watch a little clip of it, but here's, here's the uh, Post reporting. In an especially combative interview Friday with CNN Chris Cuomo, Joe Biden was hoping to rebound from his dismal debate performance. Instead, he kept making it worse. Most notable, the vice president uh, stumbled trying to explain his position on his position on mandatory school busing from more than 40 years ago. Who gives a shit? I don't care. Look, I was I grew up in New York City at that time, and I could tell you busing was a fucking mistake, right? Blacks didn't want it. Whites didn't want it. And I'll give you, I mean, I'll just draw you the picture of, of my junior high school in New York City in 1978. Uh, 1978, sitting in, in junior high school, and, and uh, one half of the lunchroom was black, and one half of the lunchroom was white. And in between, you had fistfights. You had people kicking the shit out of each other, fighting over what ignorance right because the black parents tell the white the black parents tell the black kids the whites are no good they they don't like you and then the the whites white you know family tells the white kids those those n-words those 
you know, those Negroes, uh, you know, don't like you, fuck them, you know, and that's how, and then, and you finally get to school and everybody's kicking the shit out of each other, right? Honky motherfucker, that hey, motherfucking Negro, motherfucker, you fucking, fucking, and everybody fights, and especially in my neighborhood, because my neighborhood was bust into a, a, a black neighborhood in junior high school, um, not too far away from where we lived, and, and you, you know, you put, you know, you put 25, 30, you know, tough Italian kids uh, in a neighborhood where people want to fight, and that's what you're going to get, man. And that's exactly what you got in my case. Right? So, so busing didn't work, and it is out of context. But this guy is a shit sandwich. He doesn't know how to handle uh, the blow whatsoever. Until, up until one point where Joe Biden actually tells, I've never seen that either, where uh, a person in a debate actually says, uh, is my time up, <laughs> right? He didn't even want to continue to, he didn't even want to continue to argue. And um, so let's watch, uh, let's watch, here's Joe Biden in action. Question for Democrats. They right. need a warrior, okay? Because not to aggrandize, not to lionize, but this president knows how to fight in the ring one-on-one. Kamala Harris is friendly fire. Cory Booker is friendly fire. How can Democrats have confidence that you can take on the biggest and the baddest when you're having trouble sparring in party? I don't think I'm having trouble sparring. It's how you want to spar. Look, I'm the guy at the time, everybody talks about things that are changed. I took on same-sex marriage. I took on a whole range of issues. I took on arms control. I took on dealing with the Russia with the, with the arms control agreement. I took on uh, Putin in terms of uh, Iraq. I mean, excuse me, in terms of... Uh, uh, um, what was going on in Ukraine. Mm-hmm. I've taken on these leaders around the world. I'm the guy that's gone in and met them. I've taken on all these leaders. I, I mean, I'm, this is ironic. I've never been accused of being, not being able to spar. I've been accused of being too aggressive. But the, but, t- the game has changed. Well, And you think that what's happening with Harris is anything compared to what would happen with you in this No, president? but everybody knows who this guy is. Come on, man. Come on. How do you beat him? I beat him by just pointing out who I am and who he is and what we're for and what he's against. This guy is a divider in chief. This guy is act- absolutely no fucking chance whatsoever of this guy c- c- beating Trump. He has he can't even beat a liberal talk show guy like like you can't even put Cuomo in his place. I think Cuomo said right away that that Harrison and Cory Booker are friendly fire, right? As if they're 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 going down. Right, Cuomo just made that assumption. I think that's what I heard. Right, he said, he said that uh, that the the two other candidates are friendly fire. Ooh, what a diss! Right, so so shit sandwich. What does he really stand for? Here he is in in the post again. He wants to raise corporate tax rates back to Obama era. Well, he's correct in doing that, but he wants to just raise the corporate tax rate and put it in the pockets of the billionaires. Joe Biden said that uh, if elected president, he would raise corporate tax rate from 21% to 28%, the same rate back when Obama, uh, backed by the Obama administration. That's incorrect. The, 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 the rate was 34%, not 28%. It was 34% and he didn't pay anything. Uh, so I don't know what the hell he's talking about. That would raise billions of dollars, the Democrat frontrunner said to CNN uh, in that interview. Uh, a 2017 Republican tax overhaul lowered the corporate rate from 35 to 21 percent. When Chris Cuomo pointed out uh, President Trump would say the tax cuts boosted the economy, Biden asked uh, how good Americans feel with trillions of dollars in debt. <laughs> Wrong answer. People don't know what the debt means, right? The debt is, is, is fiction anyway. The debt is just the government printing money. The, the proper answer is again. He doesn't understand. He doesn't understand economics. The idea is that first of all, Trump right now, right now, Trump is negotiating to, to to bring the uh, the uh, f- the interest rate, the Fed, the federal interest rate for banks back down to zero, meaning that banks can take unlimited funds with zero percent interest and and and. Give that to you, to lend that to you at 20, 20%, 21%, 19%, 35%, depends on, on who you are, right? And make all of that money strapping America with debt, right? And pay nothing, pay nothing for that, for that advantage. And, and, and have their uh, payback date extended five years. 
10 years, 100 years. They don't pay it back. That's the point, right? So, so neither Biden nor Trump have any idea whatsoever on how to fix a broken economy. We have a fiat system. We have a system of currency where we have a central bank that keeps printing unlimited funds, and it's just a disaster. It's a, it, it, uh, it inflates six banks to monstrous sizes. You have to break these banks up, get rid of the Federal Reserve, possibly go back to a gold standard. There's a lot of ways to fix it. But Joe Biden has absolutely no idea. Here's an interesting... Uh, I'm a fan of the uh, Kaiser Report, Matt Kaiser. Listen to the, the framing of how his, his um, associate frames this question. This is really good, a good, good two-minute exchange. Listen to this. And I want to um, look at this headline about Joe Biden, because I think Joe Biden is not the solution to what ails the Democratic Party or America. The Americans voted for Donald Trump because he promised to make America great again. The platform that Joe Biden and to be fair, he has not really spoken to anybody but billionaires in closed door sessions raising money. But from what we can tell, what his solution on offer is more of the same that has basically brought this country to where it is. Biden tells rich donors not to worry. Nothing would fundamentally change if he won. Yeah, you know what it reminded me of is that everybody in the UK that supports Brexit, their number one reason for Brexit is to return to the 1950s because that's when things were great and we need to go back to the 1950s. Joe Biden is saying to the American population that, you know, we need to go back to the 1950s where men were men, women knew their place in the home, and um, American corporations were the greatest, and uh, the minority populations of various ethnic group and racist groups uh, were, were uh, not a problem, uh, you know. And, and it's such a reactionary claptrap for billionaire nonsense, it's hard to imagine he's gonna be in the race another two or three months. I agree with that. I'm actually not that certain that his campaign is actually legitimate. It does, I, I'm not sure if he's actually running. I think it might be in order to distract the media from Bernie Sanders, who the elite in the Democratic Party don't want. They still hate him for 2016 because, of course, remember, 2016 is not Hillary's fault. Nothing about it is Hillary's fault. It's everybody's fault but hers. Anyway, on this Biden thing, though. So... Wow. So what a powerful, what a powerful exchange, right? She's, she's 100% right. I wouldn't say that Bernie state, the billionaires don't like, uh, don't like, um, Bernie Sanders because of 2016 pointing out Hillary Clinton's flaws and, and ultimately being cheated and such. They don't like him because he's, because he's the real thing. He, he wants to break up the banks, restore glass Steagall. He wants to to, to deflate the military industrial complex, the military budget. He wants to eliminate, uh, you know, pharmaceutical industrial complex by eliminating the, the, uh, the insurance companies and giving people f- Medicare for all, right? Free, me- free, free health care, uh, college tuition at city and state universities, free of charge, re- eliminate student debt, right? And, and on and on and on. That's why, you know, when, when you say, well, raise the corporate tax rate, Bernie Sanders stumbles when asked about the tax thing, and he always they always ask him, "Will you raise middle middle class taxes?" And he says, "Oh, well, a little bit." And and the, the fact is that's not that's not factually correct. If you do the things that you say you're going to do, which is get money out of politics, which is break up the big banks, which is um, healthcare, you know, universal healthcare, you a lot of those a lot of the taxes that you think you're going to pay are not really. They're not. They're, you don't. Really, you're not going to feel that at all, right? And in fact, you're you're raising the corporate tax. You're not raising the individual tax. So there's some. There is Sanders stumbles in there, but ninety percent of the of Sanders's policy is spot on. So her assessment that Joe Biden is not a legitimate candidate and is designed to to uh, to cock block. Bernie Sanders from the nomination is exactly what I told you it was, right? The whole, the whole premise of putting 20 candidates up is to cock block the, 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 the population from hearing Bernie Sanders and getting that resurgence of 2016, which 
uh, arguably won the hearts of, Amer- of, of America. They're just the other side, you know, the other, I guess, 35% of America never got to hear it because they stuffed Hillary Clinton in, in front of him. And, uh, and there went. I'll also say that if Bernie Sanders doesn't win in 2016, I know lefties, they don't want to hear this, but all of, his, all of the hopes and dreams of a, of a single-payer health care system, of getting money out of politics, of, of uh, you know, all the things that I just, I just mentioned are all, all out the window. Right? They're all out the window. All of Bernie Sanders' efforts would have been in vain because if Trump wins again, the Democrats and, and Bernie Sanders is not going to run a third time. He'll be 80 fucking nine years old, right? Or whatever, how old he's going to be, right? It's not even possible. His, he'll be so, so, uh, it'd be like a dinosaur coming to life, right? And if, you know, five years from now trying to win the, the Democratic uh, nomination, right? So if, if Sanders does lose, I got to tell you, Democrats, you are, I mean, we're on a, a trajectory, a trajectory uh, so bad and so awful for the economy and so awful for, for, uh, for, the, for the environment and such uh, that uh, it's almost unrecoverable because it, cause Trump has people snow, snow jobbed into believing that we're on the right path. Here's Trump, uh, one example of Trump's you know, disastrous ideas of what an economy should and, shouldn't, should and should not be for the American people. Trump said Friday that he had a plan to force Big Pharma to lower drug costs so that the United States would pay uh, no more than the countries that currently pays the lowest prices. <laughs> Great. Great theory, Trump. How are you going to do it? We're going to be announcing something very shortly, a favored nation's law. <laughs> the president said outside the White House as he was leaving for a weekend to New Jersey Golf Club. Uh, Trump did not provide, he did not provide other details of how the plan would work. No details. Why should other nations like Canada, why should other nations pay uh, much less than us? They've, They've taken advantage of the system for a long time, pharma. So we're working on right now a favored nations law so that the, 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 whatever the lowest nation is anywhere in the world or company, then uh, what would happen, what happens is we will pay that amount. That's being worked on right now. Uh, no, fuck you. You had, you had three and a half years to work on something. You, you provided the American people with zip, zilch, nothing, nada, nada. Nah. The answer is to get rid of the insurance companies and to, to compete in price uh, compete for, for, for pricing. One, one payer, the government, co- p- competes against Big Pharma to lower the costs of drugs. The answer is already known, but the people that follow Trump don't understand, they don't understand the, the, uh, the principal uh, problem. So, so there you go. You've got, you've got shit sandwich uh, Joe Biden. You've got, you've got Kamala, Kamala Harris canceling out Biden. You've got uh, Elizabeth Warren. Let's not let's not forget Elizabeth Warren. Kind of surging in the background, she would be a alternative for the for the corporate uh, the corporate elitists. If if push came to shove, they would go with Elizabeth Warren because Elizabeth Warren is is a uh, is a is a is, a, is for sale. Is a total sellout, right? She's a corporate Democrat uh, in in a progressive you know disguise, uh, so to speak, and she will roll over roll over like a like a you know like your favorite puppy uh to the corporate elite once elected and the fact is she will never be elected trump will eat her he eat her alive on the debate stage and the people that the real thinkers in america the progressive wing of whatever whatever the independents are not going to vote for for uh for elizabeth warren if bernie sanders is cheated which is now becoming kind of clear. So if she cheats her, if the Democrats cheat and, and, and place uh, Elizabeth Warren in front of Bernie Sanders, that's a deal breaker. That's you just, you might as well just go with Hillary Clinton again because you're going to lose. So one of the best uh, interviews uh, is, this, is this interview right here, and I'll, I'll leave it there. It's, it's five, six, seven minutes. Definitely worth a watch. I'll play it. I'm going to play it all the way through. And um, this is uh, two of my favorite people. This is Nina Turner, and uh, Dr. Cornell West, professor at Harvard, and he's he's caught. They caught this guy. This is the uh, uh, Jordan 
Jordan Charon and the ex, uh, ex-Young Turk caught them outside of the DNC uh, convention. And just, just listen to what they have to say. And this, this, this makes the case. I'm not going to play any Bernie Sanders uh, clip in here. And just listen to, the, listen to this exchange. So I, I don't want to get into the I don't want to get into what is Bernie did to do and all this horse race stuff. Talk to me about this campaign versus 2016. You were both active in 2016. What are you seeing on the ground and with Bernie himself? Well, 2016, he would have beat Trump if the Democratic Party had treated him fairly. He already generated the kind of energy and enthusiasm with a sense of vision and courage. Try to listen. I know. I know it's hard. I know because pe- there's people divided. They either. They're they're so they're so tunnel visioned into Trump, or they're so tunnel visioned against Sanders because of his support for RussiaGate and and other stuff. But just try to listen, try to listen to the rationale of these two people and the power of the message. This is the message that rose up in 2016, and is is likely to surge again if allowed. Will 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 landslide Trump, guaranteed that was required at that time. He's doing exactly the same thing thanks to this magnificent sister, this magnificent senator. And this time, the Democratic Party better treat him fairly, and there's no doubt that he is the candidate who can beat Donald Trump. Amen to that. And George, he doesn't have to contort himself to be anything other than what he is. He has been authentic 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Roll the tape, and you hear Senator Sanders saying the same thing. It is a rotten rig system, and it is rigged against the working poor and barely middle class in this country. And he is the only one that is willing to go head-to-head with this system and not sell people out. Um, the word socialism seems to be a boogeyman to the, yeah. the fine people at NBC. I interviewed some Trump supporters yesterday. Yeah. Uh, they're against socialism unless it's for them. Uh, they like Social Security. They like the Veterans right. Administration. Can you kind of talk about, uh, obviously, you did, just gave that big speech. How do uh, we de-boogeyman uh, boogie, uh, socialism to widen it out to it just means human decency and rights? Yeah, I mean, that's that's... That's really what it is about. I mean, when you talk about police force, you talk about fire fighters, you talk about clean water coming through your faucets with some Americans. I, oh, Lord, I talked about water, Jordan. Don't even get me started on water and you, all the great work that Jordan's been doing in Flint. But, you know, when you think about Social Security, as you said, Medicare, Medicaid, all of those things, it is about a democratic socialism. It is what the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King talked about when he said that we have rugged individualism for the poor but socialism for the wealthy. It really just means tilting the system to the people. That's all. That's exactly right. Don't know for Brother Bernie, like myself as well, socialism without democracy is political tyranny. He's against tyranny. That's why he's critical of the Soviet Union. That's why he's critical of Cuba and other places. But at the same time, unfettered capitalism without any kind of socialist leveling is economic tyranny. And that's true for poor people. That's true for working people. He's against tyranny per se. And in that sense, socialism signifies fairness, justice, freedom, but for poor and working people. That's right. Not just for the well-to-do, not just for corporate elites. That's right. Not just for those who have big money and big power and big influence. So socialism should not scare people once we understand what it's all about. It's about fairness, about justice, it's about freedom, especially for poor and working people. It is, Jordan. And I want to add, and it's not just President Trump that is trying to demonize this and scare people. I remember when President Trump during the last State of the Union said this country will never be a socialist nation. And I watched as Democrats stood up and cheered on the spawn of the devil against their own colleague, Senator Bernie Sanders. Now they might not necessarily agree with democratic socialism, but it told you who exactly they were when they stood up around their colleague that they served with, their colleague who's on the front line with them. They, they did not hesitate to stand up and start clapping for President, President Donald Trump. So it says a lot about them, too. I want your viewers to know, Dr. Dr. Wesson, I want your viewers to know, right. is that Senator Sanders will never sell them out. That's right. That he has a vision for this country and he has courage. And he was the only one in 2016 talking about these issues. If people want to know who won the election last night, it was Senator Bernie Sanders because his agenda was on full display. Mm, that's true. And oh, so it's a difference rich. between the copies or the original and yeah, senator bernie hard. sanders is yeah. the original and, uh, real quick i keep hearing about electability and hey. joe biden's mr electable but he was for it he was for nafta he was for tpp he's for the patriot act he wrote the crime bill all these things that were a vulnerability for hillary clinton in 2016 
we got the same thing going, but I hear he's electable. Break it down for me, Brother West. One, he's not electable. That's what the corporate media is saying, though. But you can't be electable when you have a record tied to such vicious crime bills, when you're tied to white supremacists who you agree with who ought not to use busing or school integration. You agree to every major war. He's not electable. He doesn't have the energy. He doesn't have the enthusiasm. And he doesn't have the capacity to generate that among large numbers of people. He is a milk toast neoliberal who looks backward with little vision and little courage. We need somebody who's visionary, courageous, can generate energy. It's not a question of age. That's right. It's a question of vision, energy, and enthusiasm. That's Brother Bernie. We're just telling the truth. That's it. And he has a whole movement behind him, Jordan. And that's, I really want people to understand is that the senator believes that he cannot accomplish all of these great things without the people. That's why he says this is not about me. It is about us. And historically, if we look at all great movements, they started because the grassroots bubbled up. He that's wants a right. movement that outlasts his his candidacy outlast his presidency and that is much more than any other candidate wants because most of these candidates they just want to win this election for this moment senator sanders is trying to win this election for us in our lifetime and future generations to come he's a bold, bold visionary that sets the pace in this country and he is the one whose only special interests are we the people exactly take me to church thank you very much oh, wow what a what i I mean, you can't even touch that. What a great, what a great five minutes, you know, of of, uh, of political commentary by two great people, Nina Turner and uh, and Dr. Cornell West, man. Right. So there's vision. You heard that vision. You heard that. I'm sorry. You heard that political vision. I'm talking to myself. I forgot to turn the fucking audio on. Right. Such powerful messaging. Right. I love those guys, man. I love those people. Right. That's the kind of America. America, I want to live in, right? That's the kind of place that, that I want to be, that, that you feel that spirit, you feel that, that energy. So, so what is my prediction? I told you. There will be the, my prediction of, of the, uh, who will be the next president of the United States. It will be either you will pick, if the Democrats pick Bernie Sanders as the Democratic nominee, Bernie Sanders will be the next president of the United States. If the Democrats pick anybody else but Bernie Sanders, Donald Trump will be the next president of the United States. That was my initial prediction. That is my prediction now. And that is, that is my prediction all the way to the end, right? Nothing has changed. Absolutely nothing. You can say, oh, Bernie Sanders, he didn't prevail in those stupid debates. Bernie Sanders has an army, a, 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 you know, a youth army of people Ready to ready to roll out when this when these elections come, you know. So there's no nobody has that kind of vision. Nobody has that kind of game plan. That that kind of ground game. But Bernie Sanders. So that is my prediction. It's it's uh is in in a in a in a head to head with Trump versus anybody. Trump wins. If it's a if it's a head to head with Bernie versus Trump, Bernie Sanders is the next president of the United States. Marcus Conte. Reporting.